Hey everybody, this is uh, Mr. Welch. We're just going to go through day one of class. Uh, this is under the premise that either A, we're in remote um, and we're not able to be together on the first day of school, or perhaps you're in a situation where um, you're at home trying to finish up some homework and you just you, did, you weren't able to get through it all and you have some questions. Um, and so keep in mind, I got the camera right in front of me, but my computer screen's just aside. So if I keep looking over, it's because I'm just looking at the computer, which you guys should be able to see just fine right now. Um, so the idea that we're working with here is we're talking about evaluating expressions. And so we need to just basically understand a couple of, of actual definitions. To evaluate means to find the value of. Um, and so when we talk about evaluating, we're trying to figure out what number does it equal? Okay, so this is going to be one where our answer is a specific number, um, and, and so we want to evaluate to that number. And then we have to understand that an expression, it's not quite an equation. E equations have an equal sign, but an expression will usually use variables, you know, use x or y to represent an unknown value. Well, for us to, to evaluate an expression, we're going to have to figure out what x and y are. Now, in this section, they're going to give us those. So, you know, if x is 3 and y is 7, then we can evaluate what x plus 2y is by allowing x to become a 3 plus 2, and this is multiplication, so times y, which is 7. So that's called, an, that's called a substitution that we're going to do initially to be able to make the evaluation possible. At this point, we do have to use order of operations, commonly referred to as PEMDAS, to help us make sure we do the math in the correct order. Uh, we start with any parentheses, okay? Is there anything inside the parentheses that I can do? This doesn't say seven plus three or anything like that, so there's nothing in the parentheses to do. The next thing I look for are exponents, which there are none. We'll get to exponents a little bit later in the course. Multiplication and division we do from left to right as a group. There is no division anywhere, but there is some multiplication that I can do, which would make this be 3 plus 14. And then I do addition and subtraction from left to right as a group. The only thing there is is this addition between the 3 and the 14. To add those, I get 17. That is my expression evaluated when x is 3 and y is 7. Okay. So that's what we mean by evaluating expressions, is to plug in the values that we have for variables and then simplify it using our order of operations. So let's go ahead and take a peek at what your assignment's asking you to do and maybe talk about the specific problems uh, that you might see along the way or things that you might bump into. All right, so if we scroll on down here. All right. So the first part of your homework here in this very first section, it says evaluate expressions. It talks about evaluating, you know, 15x when x is 4. Let us 15 times x, so we're just going to plug the 4 in and do the multiplication. So these are very much like what I introduced to you at the beginning. There are going to be some that have fractions, like number 13. And when we deal with that, you know, y minus 1 half but y equals 5 sixths, so 5 over 6 minus 1 half. Yes, I'm okay with using calculators. I would like you to be able to answer as a fraction, so that's one of the things that we might need to talk about individually is how do I get a calculator to give me a fraction, or what are my options there? Preferably, we would just change this fraction to have a common denominator. The common denominator of 6 and 2 is 6, so I would keep the 5 over 6, but I would have to times the top and bottom of this fraction by 3 to maintain the concept of a half, which would be 3 over 6. And now when I have 5 6 minus 3 6, I would get 2 6, which we know reduces by dividing both by 2 to make 1 third. And that would be our best simplified answer for number 13. So sometimes we're going to have to deal with fractions. That's okay. It's not a big deal. Um, when we're talking about powers, exponents like 7 to the third, what that means is 7 times 7 times 7. Okay, we're writing the power out in words and as a product. So we mean 7 times 7 times 7, or 7 
times seven. Yeah, so we, we'd write it out like that. Feel free to go ahead and evaluate, but the truth is you can't evaluate all of these because if you don't know the value of the variable, this is literally on 22, y times y times y six times. And that's what we mean by evaluating exponents or writing powers in expanded form. When it does come to evaluating those exponents, well, 3 to the 5th, I don't know about you, but I am not going to multiply 3 times 3 five times by hand. I might do it a few times, but it's going to get old pretty quick. I'm much more likely to go to a calculator. So we're going to jump on here real quick, and we're going to go to basically our default um, calculator that we'll use throughout the year. It's the Desmos Graphing Calculator. Um, and you can log on, you can sign in with a Google account or other things to keep it so it, it will retain what you've been working on. But um, let's go ahead and just look at 3 to the 5th. So it's 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And you can see right here we get an answer of 243. So that's, that's sort of the expectation that we might have about how to answer some of these problems. Okay, just using the calculator to help us along the way. With fractions, you know, you have 1 over 6 to the third. That's the same as 1 over 6 times 1 over 6 times 1 over 6. If you multiply the top through, 1 times 1 times 1 will be 1. And then down here, it's just 6 times 6 times 6. That's going to give you a really easy way to get the fraction without using a decimal and not having to put as much into the calculator. If you write 1 over 6 times 1 over 6 times 1 over 6, you're probably getting a decimal. So just that's something to be thoughtful about um, as you go through and try to evaluate these. Okay. The last part of your homework, the uh, last major part of your homework, has to do with evaluating expressions when there's maybe more than one variable. And what the key idea is here that I really want to point out um, would be that when there's no mathematical symbol between two letters like K and N, uh, that means that we're going to multiply those two variables, or the two values. So when you do the substitution, it's a type of multiplication. All right, hopefully that's enough to get you through what you need to know. Um, if you have questions, please come and check in with me. If we're on a remote schedule, check in with me during my office hours or shoot me a message on Teams that you need to meet, and we can go over some specific cases. Otherwise, uh, good luck, guys, and we'll see you uh, hopefully in class soon.